Permanti Bros has given Italian Americans across this nation a bad name. Their refusal to serve J.D. Vance this weekend is reminiscent of Jim Crow. The IACRL is calling for a Permanti boycott, and we would like to welcome Senator Vance to a true Italian Sunday dinner. No shoes, no shirt, no conservatives. The Italian American Civil Rights League condemns Permanti Bros for discrimination. The Italian American Civil Rights League today issued a formal condemnation of the Permanti Bros restaurants for their disgraceful lack of hospitality to Senator J.D. Vance. Permanti Bros restaurants refused service to Senator J.D. Vance for no good reason, said Mike Crispy, president of the Italian American Civil Rights League. Sona una vergogna, they are a disgrace. Crispy was referring to a news report that a Permanti Bros restaurant, one of several in a Pittsburgh area chain of restaurants, refused to allow Vance to enter and even threatened to call the police if he tried. As a people, Italian Americans are known for our hospitality, Crispy said. Permanti Bros tables should always be open to every American, regardless of their political beliefs. Crispy said, the actions of Permanti Bros are reminiscent of Jim Crow America, when black Americans were turned away from the Woolworth lunch counter simply because of their race. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and the Greensboro Four were heroes for their courageous work uniting Americans in every facet of civil life. Crispy said, The IACRL rejects any effort by an Italian-American business to divide and punish Americans for their political beliefs. Crispy said the Permanti Bros incident is just the latest in a series of exclusionary efforts by corporate conglomerates to bully or threaten friends and staffers of President Trump merely for their political beliefs. This all started with Maxine Waters, who called on left-wing activists to confront Trump supporters in restaurants and tell us we are not welcome anymore, anywhere. Crispy said, now Permanti Bros has taken it even further, saying no shoes, no shirt, no conservatives. Crispy went on to cite the Red Hen restaurant that denied service to Sarah Huckabee Sanders. We can't allow the behavior of Permanti Bros to leave a bad taste in the mouth of Senator Vance, Crispy said. It would be our honor to show him and his staff True Italian American hospitality. Crispy, the I A C L R L, would organize an authentic Italian American dinner for Vance as soon as this Tuesday, following his debate in New York City. Now, if you aren't familiar with what's going on and you're wondering what possibly could have happened at this restaurant for JD Vance to now be equal to the name of Rosa Parks, well, essentially what happened is. J.D. Vance sent people into the restaurant to wait for J.D. Vance, and while they were setting up in the parking lot for a photo op, it came to the attention of the restaurant that this was happening. There was no approval ahead of time for this event. The Secret Service showed up and started taking control of the restaurant without approval of the restaurant. J.D. Vance wanted to then hold the event in the parking lot and they, according to reports, threatened to call the police because no, he cannot take over private property for an unscheduled, unapproved campaign event just because he feels like it. So because J.D. Vance would have had to schedule ahead of time, he is now comparable to Rosa Parks. Seriously, that, that's what they're doing, right? MAGA has been pushing this for a while, ever since it started. The Permanti Bros Restaurant and Bar put out this statement. Permanti has prides itself on being a staple of the Pittsburgh community and a proud American business that has hosted sitting presidents, politicians, and political candidates from across the spectrum for over 90 years. Our doors are open to all patrons who wish to dine with us. Without any advance notice, today's campaign stop caused some momentary confusion for our staff. However, Senator Vance and his team were welcomed into our restaurant shortly after and engaged with our guests inside and on the property. Senator Vance's supportive comments that our manager got a little nervous given the Secret Service, police, and crowd accurately reflect the nature of what occurred. We are glad that it was resolved quickly. So, yeah, 
this was a manufactured event, right? So remember, J.D. Vance admits to manufacturing lies about Springfield, Ohio. And he went on television and said that it's okay to lie. It's okay to create the stories because when you create the stories, it appears in the media. Well, they wanted to now make it that conservatives are now the new Jim Crow, right? That was really the push they wanted. And even though it fell flat, they can't give up. Just like they couldn't give up on their eating the cats or eating the dogs in Springfield, even when it was proven to be a lie, they had to keep trying to push it. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. Different MAGA conservative figures are trying to push basically a lie about a sandwich shop. That's where we're at with the Trump campaign. That's what's left, right? Like, there's not much else for Trump to do at this point. He's going up on stage and calling for the purge. Like, and J.D. Vance is just trying to, you know, do J.D. Vance things, which are lie. <laughs> just lie and put out misinformation and try to organize misinformation. And a lot of people think that, well, maybe J.D. Vance's advance team's just really bad. They didn't get approval. Someone thought they did, and that's what caused the problem. Personally, I wouldn't be shocked if they didn't get approval on purpose just so they could have some sort of a controversy, right? Because, you know, J.D. Vance can play the victim. You know, that that's a big thing with conservatives, right? They always have to be the victim. The You know, Fox News is the biggest cable provider, but and all your local stations are now owned by Sinclair, but the liberal mainstream media is the problem. You, you, you know, social media, if you're completely being censored by social media, says the conservative figure on their Facebook page, their Twitter page, their YouTube page, their Google podcast, all that stuff. Like, it, it's being a perpetual victim. And we're getting closer to the election, right? And the problem with J.D. Vance is J.D. Vance is such a piece of shit, right? That even if J.D. Vance were ever the actual victim, no one really cares. And that's something I've noticed with this is very few people are even talking about it now. I've seen the the group we just I just read, right, which is a guy, uh, Mike Crispy or whatever Crispy his name is. I looked him up. I believe he's a Trump elector, but I think he's in a state that didn't vote for Trump. And he, he he's a, he's a MAGA guy. Right. And then Laura Loomer. That's that that's who I see caring about the sandwich shop, right? Because that's all they got. And sandwich and Laura Loomer's like, I'm gonna do a big investigation into this sandwich shop. Okay. <laughs> I I did a video previously about this stop because I, I had a feeling that it was gonna be an attempt to manufacture something out of it. And even though it failed, like it didn't really take off in conservative media, they're still pushing it. And they need a distraction. Because the news broke that the vice presidential debate, the moderators are not going to fact check even the most blatant lies. They are not going to fact check any time J.D. Vance lies to you. So now J.D. Vance has to be the victim. He's got to be the victim going into the debate for one of two reasons, right? There's a chance that he loses that debate and he wants to, you know, look like a victim ahead of time. Or two, he's going to win the debate because Tim Walls is known to not be a good debater. And uh, or he's going to perform better in the debate than expected. And then he'll be like, look at me. I did it even when I when I was denied a sandwich, which I mean. Imagine trying to like campaign on the fact that you didn't get a sandwich that. If you read, he did. He was momentarily delayed. They shouldn't have allowed him. They shouldn't have allowed him to do it, right? Like, if you don't plan ahead, you try to take over a restaurant with secret service for an event, they should not have allowed him to come in. They should have had the police remove him. They didn't do that. And still, he's the victim. He's like Martin Luther King. It's Jim Crow all over again. 